In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build a stock price web application in Python using the Streamlit and also the Y Finance library. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the first thing that you want to do is fire up the terminal. And I'm going to be going to the desktop, going to the Streamlit folder, CD into the stock folder ls to have a look at the contents and so here we see that we have the app.py let me activate my conda environment it's data professor all right and then i'll run the app.py and in order to do that i'll type in streamlit run app.py okay and so this is how the web app for the stock price will look like and so you're going to be seeing here that on the left hand side we have the sidebar panel and the sidebar panel will allow you to select the starting date and the ending date for the data to be displayed and then you also have the stock ticker and for this one it will be a drop down and then you could select from amongst the 500 S&P companies. And so the first company is Avi. And if you change it to another company like Amazon, then the data will also change. And so under the hood, we're using Y Finance in order to retrieve all of this data, even the logo and even the paragraph explaining about the company, as well as the ticker data. And also for the Bollinger Bands here, we're using the cufflinks. And actually, the cufflinks library here was suggested by one of the subscribers of this channel. And so kudos to him or her. And aside from that, we're using the Pandas library and also the DateTime library as well. And definitely, we also use the Streamlit in order to make all of this happen here in the web app. And so all of this data and information are obtained from Y Finance. And aside from that, you can also obtain additional information. So I'm going to be talking about that in just a moment. Okay, and so let's open up the Atom Text Editor. And let's look at the underlying code. Okay, so the first lines of code here will be importing the necessary libraries. And as mentioned, we are using the Streamlit library, which allows us to make this web application. The Y Finance will allow us to retrieve all of the stock data and also the information that you see here. Pandas is employed to display the data frame. Cufflinks is allowing us to create this beautiful Bollinger Bands plot easily. And also we're making use of the date time in order for us to select the date and time. And as you see here, we are able to use the date input function and then the date data is making use of the date time library. Okay, so we'll go back to that in just a moment. On lines number 7 through 16, we're going to be displaying the top portion of the web application, which is the title of the price app here, and also the details of the app, as well as the credits of the app. And so all of this is using the markdown. And so on lines number 19 to 21, it's going to be the sidebar panel that you see here. So notice that we're using st.sidebar and the subheader query parameters will allow us to display the header here, query parameters. And then the start date and the end date are the two variables that we will be assigning based on the date input that the user will be able to select. And so for this one, we're using the date input function from Streamlit. And the date time date here is making use of the date time library. And so we're setting the default to be January 1st of 2019 until the end of January of 2021. And if we change the date here, 
then either the start date or end date will also be reflected as well. And after we selected the start and ending date, that will allow us to specify the time frame for us to take the data from the Y Finance library. And so it will be here, ticker data dot history and the period we're going to be using the one day period. And so there are other time frame as well. And so you should definitely check out the API of the Y Finance library for further information. And so the ticker list is coming from this file. Let me show you. And so I've actually forked the file. And so let's have a look. And so it's just a simple file containing the ticker data here. Okay, and so we're using pandas to read in the data here. And then in the ticker symbol variable here, we're making use of the st.sartbar.select box. And it's going to be right here, the stock ticker. And so you can select a ticker of your choice, and then the data will be displayed here. Okay, so the logo and also the description of the company will also go there. Okay, change another company and the data will be reflected here. Okay. Let's have a look further. So the ticker information right here is the logo. Let's have a look at the logo. Logo is right here. And in order to get the logo, we define the variable called string logo. And then we're making use of HTML syntax as well. And in place of the string, we're going to be making use of the ticker data.info. And then we're going to be selecting logo URL. So actually you could have a look at what content is under ticker data.info. And so aside from logo URL, there are several other details as well. And so actually, let me show you. Let's type in ticker data or how about just ticker data. And then let me try st.write and then save it. And then let's have a look at the contents of that. Okay, so it's an object. So let me see. Let me try this. All right, and so here you're going to be seeing the content of this ticker data.info. And so you're seeing here, this is the paragraph that we're using, right? The long paragraph here, the descriptive paragraph here. It's actually right here that we're using in the st.info function that allows it to be displayed as a blue colored box here. And so we're using the long business summary. And as you see here, it is right here, long business summary. And so you could play around with this application and you could create your own custom stock price app as well by adding additional information if you like. Like for example, you could also add the zip code number if you like, or the sector of the company, which is technology for this one, the number of full-time employees. And there are several other, like what city is the company based in? state, country, phone number, the URL of the website, right? And then there are several other, like what is the 50 day average? Okay, and so there are several other like market cap. Okay, so you could feel free to customize this price app to your own preference. And so what we have here is just the basic. So for the ticker data.info, we're making use of only the logo URL, the long name of the company, and also the business summary. And the long name of the company, let me hide this first. So the long name of the company is right here. This is the long name right here. Long name is right here, long name. All right, and so let's move further. The ticker data that you see here, the data frame is made possible here, st.header ticker data, and then st.write, and then we write in the ticker DF. And the ticker DF here is based on the start date and the end date that the user has specified. So if you want a year back, you could also specify that as well. Let's say I want January of 2018. 
And then you see here, starting from January 2, 2018. And so the data is also updated as well. Okay, let's have a look at the Bollinger Bands code here, which is on lines 44 until 48. So we're making use of cufflinks and the Bollinger Band is right here. All of the lines 45, 46, 47, and 48. And so we're making use of ticker df as the input argument. And then the title is specified here, which is right here. First quant figure. And then the legend will be at the top right here. And we add the Bollinger Bands, as you see here. As you see here, and then we assign the figure here into a fig variable, and then the fig variable will be the input argument to st.plotly charts because under the hood, cufflinks is based on plotly. And so, actually, you could also make the same plot using plotly, but then that would require you some additional lines of code. And so cufflinks will make it easier for you in a concise way. And so you could just simply use cufflink to make this awesome Bollinger Band plot. So as mentioned previously, you could take a look at the tickerdata.info and then feel free to add some more additional information to your price app. And so there you have it, the stock price app that you could build in less than 50 lines of code. So I hope that you're finding value in this video and please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as a new video comes out. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.